What's up everyone, David Ronefalk here from Mayako and today I wanted to uh, take you through my build process of the center assembly as well as the brake linkage for your Mayako MX-8 buggy. Um, explaining a couple of things along the way and hopefully you learn something out of it and next time you go to the track you should have good performing brakes in your car. So, uh, you know, follow me and uh, let's get right into it. All right, so we're here by my wrench table and uh, in front of me I think I have everything that I need to um, assemble uh, the center diff mount and actually I'm building a new kit so we're going to go through my full process of building bag I and that includes of course the, the, all the brake uh, assembly as well, brake pads, brake discs, cam, lever, all these things that you need to, to assemble the brakes. Uh, so I'll take you through my, uh, to the different steps that I do completing this build. And then um, I'll throw the center diff mount into the car. Then we're gonna go over the uh, brake linkage. So that's what we're gonna do now. So I'll take you over here in the different view so you can see what, what we're working with. So like I said here, we have bag eye. So let's go ahead and open it. So in here, you have all the the hardware, uh, you have the carbon piece for the diff mount, all the plastics, these little guides that goes on the bottom for the discs, and then we have all the discs, brake cam, like I said. I'll open this bag as well. So I'm just throwing everything on the table so we can get started. So now we've got everything uh, that uh, is in the bag eye of the MX-8 kit here on the table like you can see. Um, I made the center diff before with 20,000 in it. I'm using the XTR DR line of oils and this car will be uh, used at the track with a little bit higher grip conditions hence the 20,000 in the center. And I thought as this uh, video is mainly for the brakes and the brake linkage, I'll make a, a bit of a time lapse here assembling the center diff mount. And uh, once I have it completed, I'll take you through the, the more important step for the brakes uh, to work properly. All right, so here we have the um, center diff now mounted onto the plastic mount and I've also gone ahead and added the pads and the disc on one of the sides. So I thought it would be enough to show you just on one side, so just to save a little bit of time. But before we proceed with that, I just also wanted to cover uh, what parts that I use because this build will all be with a standard disc and the standard pads etc. Uh, so I have another piece of the plastic mount here that I'm going to use um, to show you how I uh, build um, the brakes with these RC product discs and also uh, the special brake screws that T-Works made. Uh, so these screws have a bit of a shoulder to them, uh, just a smooth shoulder so these basically uh, are the tubes so standard you use these screws and you have the tube that goes over it so basically this screw is very similar to that but it's just in one piece in titanium um, so there's a couple of things that you have to think about when you build the brakes with this screw first of all this RC product disc as you can see is 1.6 millimeter uh, thick whereas the standard one is 2.0 millimeter so this means that we can't really uh, if you have these screws but not the discs you have to kind of make a small correction uh, of the amount you are going to thread this screw in so you have to basically back it out and that's what I wanted to show you guys now so I'll go ahead and um, mount the pads here and I use the standard spring in between even with this uh, special brick screw so one thing I've noticed that is easy uh, is that you think that this screw is threaded all the way in before it actually is all the way in. So like right there it's it feels like it's getting pretty tight um, and I'll show you once I've had the other screw here mounted too that you actually have to go it's almost like a half a millimeter further because there's a, a pocket here in the plastic piece that uh, this little shoulder on the screw has to go into that pocket um, otherwise uh, the brakes are not really functioning as they are supposed to so I'll thread this other one in here and right around there it's pretty pretty tight already there 
So now what happens is that if I put the the disc here, you see that there's a lot of gap here. And that essentially means that you can see if I push them together, you can see that there's quite a big gap, which means that the brake levers have to go, uh, they have to travel further before the brakes um, engage. So if you have this T-Works brake screw, you have to make sure that it's threaded fully inside and you can use the backside here of this plastic mount as a reference. So this, um, the end of the screw should be close to flat, flush with the uh, back of the plastic mount. So I'm threading these a little bit more like you can see. And now these are just about flush with the backside here. It's very important that these two are equal as well. So now if I put this um, disc in between, you're gonna see it's a lot tighter here. There's less, um, there's less play on the disc. And if I push it together, you can see you can see the, uh, I don't know if you can see it, but in the, the amount of gap in between the screw here, the screw head and the brake pad, it's much smaller. Probably even a little bit close, uh, smaller than uh, 0.5 millimeter, I would say. So this is how this brake screw is supposed to be, um, or how it's supposed to go inside this plastic mount with the brake pads. So the end of the screw being close to flush with the backside of the mount. So now I wanted to show you what happens then if you use these screws with a standard disc. So if you take the standard disc, it's not going to be free at all because this one was obviously like you saw, it was two millimeter thick, whereas the RC product disc is 1.6. So this, the length of the shoulder on these screws were made for the product disc because that's what I ran all the um, year last year. So if you're gonna use this screw with a standard disc, obviously you're going to have uh, to back these screws out a bit. So um, just make sure you back them out equal side to side and try to kind of uh, get the same, uh, which is yeah, right around half a millimeter of space there between the, um, the head of the screw and the brake pad. If it's close to half a millimeter gap here now, uh, you should be pretty good then it, the disc should be running free, free between the pads and you ha will have um, the, the levers, so the, the brake levers won't have to travel as far before the brakes engage. So that's an important note if you're going to uh, use these T-Works screws and the RC product disc or whether you use the standard disc. Uh, so I wanted to cover that as well in this video because I think it's important as I know uh, many of you are using these discs. Um, but now we're gonna use the standard stuff. So I'll disassemble this to get the springs um, again. All right, so now I have taken that apart and we can uh, start uh, assembling the other side here uh, with the standard stuff again. <clears throat> so what I do is I put the, the pad on here. I take these screws. These screws were uh, with the hex here before. They are now just standard button heads because the hex is not really really needed. So you want to put the tube and the spring over that. So then you have you can't put the both sides like in this step you have to just put it like this for now uh, so you're able to mount the disc onto the the out drive here just like that. Then you can go ahead and add the tube, the spring and then obviously the screw on the other side as well. So this tube um, was designed for this disc, obviously. So they are the right length. You will have the right amount of gap when using the standard disc, standard tube, everything standard. So these, you just want to thread them all the way in until it's tight. And now you can see there's just about the same gap that I had on the product discs and the, the T-Works screw. Right around, or a little bit less than half a millimeter, I would say. And then you know that the, the levers, they won't have to travel that far before the brakes actually engage. So one thing I almost forgot to mention here is that um, on these brake pads, sometimes you can feel that after a while, as this brake cam is wearing on the pad, like the backside of this pad, sometimes it can get a little bit sticky. So this is something that we've just recently thought about 
and found out. So I've been trying, or basically it was uh, Oscar, uh, my mechanic at the DNC. He felt uh, the brakes were sticking a bit. So here I just took another set of pads from my uh, spare parts uh, to show you what he did. So basically on the pad, you have this, this coating. So this is the standard pad. I don't know if you can see. And here is what he did. So basically he removed and polished the backside of the pad to make it fully shiny. So basically he just removed the coating here that is on the, the backside of the brake pad. So now it's like very shiny and friction free. So this is what I'm testing right now. I haven't tested it enough to be able to say if, the, if it makes a big difference. But I will no, uh, let you know uh, as soon as I have a good amount of time on my brakes uh, to say if I can feel a difference or if the, the brakes stay free after these uh, pads get worn here on the back. So I think this this made the, the, the cams move really uh, free and very smooth on the back side of the pad. So I don't think it's a bad thing for sure. Uh, so if you're curious to try, this is also something you can do. Uh, so I just wanted to cover that as well. Then uh, one thing which is easy to do when you build, when you put the cams on and the brake levers is to forget about the direction of the cams. So if the diff is sitting like this, this is the front of the car, this is the back obviously. This front brake cam has to be pointing towards the bottom because it's going to, yeah, you're going to move the brake lever back. So this is going to have to come forward to push on the brake pad. And here on the back, it's the opposite then. So here you want the, the brake cam to be pointing towards the top. So that's the, something that I uh, made that by mistake as well. I assembled everything and then I didn't pay attention to the brake cam and it turned completely around. So I had this one pointing towards the top when I mounted the brake lever and uh, I didn't have any front brake then when I had everything assembled in the car. So that's just a heads up for you guys. Um, this set screw here, I like to put some Loctite on that as well, uh, just to make sure that these levers are not moving. Uh, another thing you want to make sure is that these brake levers, that they are mounted like perfectly in line with the mount. So this little ear here should not be like twisted or anything. It should be like perfectly in line with the mount, both front and rear. And they should also be very equal here in the height, so in this level. So this is something I will also cover when we have this piece in the car, which is basically our next step here. All right, so now I have pre-assembled the uh, brake and throttle linkage here and I wanted to cover when I installed this in the car. But before that, I just came to think about one thing that I forgot to mention talking about the uh, RC uh, product disc. And that is when uh, you use these standard tubes and not this T-Works screw that was made for the a little bit thinner disc that the RC product one is. What you want to do to get the right amount of play between the pad and the, and the uh, head of the screw here, once you have those installed, is that you have to shorten this tube a little bit. So if we look here, this tube is around nine millimeter long, and that is designed for the two millimeter thick standard brake disc. So this screw was designed for the 1.6 mil brake disc, uh, like the RC product one. So this shoulder here, it should be around 8.2 like you can see it's like 075 shorter than the tube here of uh, the standard tube for the uh, screw so you're gonna have to shorten them by half to 0.75 millimeter uh, if you don't have this screw yet so that is if you're running the RC product disc well let's uh, continue with the build here so we have the brake and throttle uh, linkage here pre-assembled like I said so before we install this in the car I can just go over a couple of things uh, so I have this uh, little plastic triangular piece uh, that are both used for the throttle, uh, the throttle and the brake linkage. So the throttle one uh, obviously has a slightly bigger hole so, so that it can easily slide when the carburetor opens or closes. Uh, the brake one is a little bit smaller so you're threading this long linkage inside. And what I usually do is that I make sure to thread it all the way in so you can see the end of the linkage is flush with the back here of uh, the plastic piece. Uh, that is just to make sure it's the correct length and also when giving throttle this one will move forward so it's not too far forward hitting the servo or anything. So that's why I always keep it flush here on the back. 
and in that way it's been working well for me. Another thing that I do is if you look at this plastic piece, it has a neck on one of the sides which is close to being a millimeter I think and here on the other side you just have a small little bump <laughs> I would call it. So this one is smaller than on the other side. So this can be a good thing uh, to take care about when you mount these onto the servo horn. So as you know, when these sit in the car, they will sit something like this and the throttle linkage will be moving. And I have the screw here mounted on this uh, collar because I'm using rubber bands as well as the spring the return spring for the carburetor and sometimes depending on the height of the brake levers it can get pretty close here and the collar can almost be hitting the the brake linkage as the uh, throttle is moving so one thing i i do is that i take uh, the dremel and i just sand the bottom of this collar flat just so that it can't catch the brake linkage as much when it moves or it won't touch at all uh, if, you, if you're doing it this way. The other thing, like I said, basically there would be two ways to mount this thing. So if you would mount it with the small neck here to the top, obviously the brake linkage would be further up. And so to say it will also be closer to the throttle linkage. So what I do is that I always use this thicker side to the top, which means this piece here will be sitting a little bit lower, creating more space for the throttle linkage. So you won't have these two touching or rubbing each other. So that's just one thing I do and then of course on the throttle I make sure to have the uh, small side to the top so that it actually raises the, the throttle uh, linkage a little bit so even creating you know as much space as possible uh, right in this location right here. So that's something to keep in mind when you're building this linkage that we have. All right, so moving forward, we now have the uh, center diff assembly here mounted into the car. We have our brake linkage. Uh, this car doesn't have any servos in it right now, but I will be covering all the necessary stuff as you mount this into your car. I'll show you before we assemble this. Uh, the, uh, the brake linkage also have a bend to it. So I usually mount this bend so that the link should be horizontal. Uh, so it's it shouldn't be going down or anything. I put this link hor horizontal so it actually just moves a bit towards the outside, creating a bit more space here around this area. Looking it to the side, it should be perfectly horizontal, which means the bend will go just further out here on the side of the chassis. So I will mount this through and put one of these plastic little half moons or whatever you want to call it. Then we go here with the adjustment collar for the brakes. So uh, one thing to keep in mind when you when you mount these, obviously you should put the o-ring inside. And then um, I usually put the um, adjustment nut here in the middle, somewhere in the middle at least, because then when you set the brakes, you will have a bit of room to go either way. So that's good when you mount it into your car for the first time to kind of have it in the middle. And then you might have to adjust it later on when you have the servo and everything inside. Uh, but yeah, keeping it in the middle, you have enough room to move it either, you know, softer brakes or a bit harder. One note I can tell you here is that I like to put one of these uh, small little o-rings. So actually this is an uh, o-ring that I found when I was in the engine factory in Italy. So this one is for the top needle of a um, carburetor. So this one fit perfectly onto the brake linkage. So that's something that I put there. I have seen someone use a uh, fuel tube, some use shock o-rings as well. Uh, but that one works for me because it's a little bit stiffer than a shock o-ring. But uh, yeah, this, uh, this time we'll just mount it standard here, like in the manual. So I'll mount that through, push the linkage through the front brake lever, mount the plastic piece, and then the collar. So obviously make sure that you have the adjustment nut here pointing towards the, the brake lever, uh, so you don't have them the other way around because then you can't set the brakes. So I'm just tightening those down like this for now. All right, so now we have our brake linkage here in the car. Like I said, I don't have servos and, and engines in this car yet, but I will go through the next few steps that you have to take care about. And that is when you have the engine inside and you're mounting this throttle linkage to the engine, you want to make sure that this linkage for the throttle is perfectly horizontal, so in line with the carburetor. So you might have to adjust this little end piece here where the ball sits on the carburetor to have this linkage sit perfectly 
flat with the ground or with the chassis let's say because if it's in an angle uh, it can damage or make the carburetor go sticky uh, not moving smoothly when throttling so that's one thing that you have to take care sometimes i see people and the the throttle linkage is either pointing up or down and it's not really uh, moving the carburetor in a proper way so that can be you know damage your carburetor uh, as well another thing is to take care about the servo height so sometimes you have servo brands that you might have to space the servo up so for example like the high-tech servos that i'm using i have to space the um the servo up uh, like a millimeter on the throttle not before to clear the chassis uh, so that you you also need to keep in mind when assembling the throttle servo into the car so next thing here is that your brakes then they shouldn't be moving so like the neutral will be here they are completely free and they should be moving like one hour on the clock before they engage. So when they do, you know you have the right uh, distance between the pads here with the tube and the screws and everything. So if it's not, like if it's engaging a lot later, you probably haven't tightened the screws here enough because they should be tightened the same length as the, the tubes are. So make sure that this is about the movement that the brake levers should do before they engage. Next thing, you wanna keep also the brake linkage. So if you're looking from the side here of the car, you want to make sure that uh, the brake linkage is not like pointing in an, an, any angle like this. So it should be horizontal. The brakes should be free here. When the servo is mounted as well, of course, this thing should be free. So it shouldn't be any tension or anything. And like these little plastic half moons on the brake linkage, they should also be hitting the, the uh, let's say the round hole of the brake lever perfectly in the center. Like if you have have these levers mounted in the car at an angle these won't you know hit the brake lever hole perfectly so that's something you also have to take care about so uh, if you have followed these steps uh, regarding the assembly of the center diff mount and the brakes of your Mayako MX-8 that should be giving you the best chances to have uh, the good performing brakes when you're on the track um, so yeah, it, it's a little bit different uh, with just one brake linkage versus uh, two that many other brands use. But as long as you just build it properly and uh, you take some time to understand uh, how it works, you will uh, you will have uh, you know great brakes on the track, and that should give you the best uh, possibilities to do uh, the quick lap, lap times that we all want. So uh, thank you for watching, and hopefully that was helpful. If you have any other questions, just you know reach out to me on discord or wherever you want and i'll try to get back to you as soon as i can thank you bye